Hi, guys. So I know the Spirit is trying to speak to us with all of these stories that we have. It is very, very relevant for this time because I know that these stories are relating directly to what's going on in the stars. And so we have Mars, I think yesterday or two days ago, going retrograde in Gemini. And then we have a lunar eclipse in Taurus. And the Spirit is speaking to us about those events. And for those of you who do other astrology and Vedic astrology and stuff like that, that's fine. That's, it's all related. When things touch each other, they mix together through osmosis. And so the representation will be in the symbolism. It will be in the intention of the heart. Just because I call it Gemini does not mean that the intention is not going to be true. We just learned about how the words can mislead you because literally there are millions probably of words in all human languages that mean the exact opposite of themselves. And so you must read the intention behind the words, okay? It doesn't actually matter the label. It matters the intention that's coming through in the vibration and the frequency of the teaching. So I have been asking the spirit to kind of pinpoint for us how this is all working out and what the signs in the skies are telling us as they it is related to our teachings. Okay, so I picked out from the deck. I went searching for them myself. I didn't pull them like I normally would. I went searching for these cards because I feel like they're rev- relevant to what's going on. I'm hoping that I can use them, okay? I also pulled this one out because this is a super, super important symbol for the next couple of months, okay? So the Spirit is saying to me, we're going to start with um, Mars retrograde in Gemini. Okay, You guys, it was about 18 months ago or so that we already had a teaching about Mars entering into Gemini, okay? Right now, he's retrograde in Gemini, okay? Sweeping back through again, which is super, super important. Um, The first teaching we had about Mars Entering Gemini, guys, if you can picture the symbol for Gemini, he's the twins, okay? Castor and Pollux up there, the twins of Gemini. So what we had was Jesus on the donkey riding into the gates of Jerusalem. That's the original idea we had when Mars entered Gemini. 18 months ago. Okay, so we have an understanding that we were already entering the gates. And now we have the exact same notion, okay? We have the right hand and the left hand, you guys. And what are hands? Hands are palm fronds, and we have all the palm fronds waving. People are trying to enter the gates of Jerusalem again, okay? So what's happening with the right hand and the left hand, the palms waving, the palm fronds? Here comes Messiah, right? They're, they're, getting, they're being organized, Everybody's getting organized and put in their place at this time. This is why all the palm fronds are waving. Left hand is going over here and everything's being transposed and some are falling to the wayside and all of that. The thing is, you guys, we already entered the gates. What this is, is 
18 months ago when we had the revelation of Jesus entering in on the donkey. It was also Mordecai. Why Mordecai? Because Mordecai is the worshiper of Mars. And this we're talking about Mars entering the twins, the pillars, the gates. Okay. Mordecai was he's the worshiper of Mars. You were supposed to be beat up, striped, wounded, uh, practically defeated when you arrive at the gate. And that's when the tax collector says to me, in order to pass this gate, pass this bridge, you have to get me give me back what I gave you. So Mordecai, what does he give? He gives over the sandal, okay? He gives over the comforter, the cloak. He gives over the staff. The staff has a light, a ball of light on top of it. It was the luminescence, okay? All of those tools Mordecai used to go to war. You see, Mordecai was supposed to die when he took the fruit of knowledge from the tree. God said, you shall surely die. Every human being has done it. And that this is why this is the age of death and war. The God of death, the God of war. We went out to battle the enemy. You guys, what we do at the gate, it's an exchange yeah, I am seeing monetary exchange. Of course I am, because skins is a slang for money. You're handing in your skins, and it's being exchanged. Uh, the Spirit's saying bartered, but it's also um, when you enter a new country, and you have to get their currency now, okay? So what happens is now you get the Bible. What does the Bible say? Well, God is going to place his feet now, okay? But it's like, is there iron shoes or something? And then you get this cloak, this shield, the shell, the cloak, the garment of light now. Because you're trading in the old one, the perishable one, the one that was beat up in war and beat up in death. You're also handing over your scepter. And instead of that, just that faint uh, luminescence of the moon... You will receive your staff back. It's the staff with the sun on it. Okay? So Mordecai did that. He took on the garments of the king as he was paraded through the city. He had already entered the gate and paraded through the city. Okay. So... Now, Mordecai's already inside the gate, you guys. And people are gathering there. People are gathering there. And they, too, want to enter in. The, the question becomes, are you Balaam on the stubborn donkey where the angel of the Lord stood before Balaam and would not let him pass? Numbers 22, the angel of the Lord stood before Balaam and would not let him pass. The one who was on the stubborn donkey and was going to go do his own thing, go his own way, not take the whippings, not go to war, not understand that he was in death, not find the way to resurrect, okay? So the angel of the Lord stands before him. What is that language under there? It's Hasatan, the angel of the Lord, Satan, the adversary, stands guarding the gate. Who's, who's the doorman? Boaz and Jaquin, gold and silver. The ones who had the metal, M-E-T-T-L-E, -T -T -E, the heart, the courage to take the war, to go to war, to defeat the enemy. Okay, and they're not actually 
guarding the gate. But what does adversary mean? It means the accuser. What does accuser mean? The ones who stand here because they already entered, had their victory lap, and now they're standing at the gate. And everybody now is gathering there to come in at this season. Um, they say they, they, they're the, they appear to be guarding the gate. The adversary, the angel of the Lord standing before Balaam. And what they're actually doing, the accuser, to accuse means to, literally, to point at. So the angels... The cherubim with the flaming sword who stand to guard the gate, the way to the tree of life. They're standing there saying, no, the gate isn't here. It's in you. It's inside of you. To point at is to accuse it's in you, it's in you, it's in you. And the people here think that we're guarding it, barring it. No, no entrance. No, the, this, is, this is, appears to be the entrance. The entrance is actually inside of you, your heart, your heart. If this is your right hand and this is your left, this is the center of your chest. It's inside of your rib cage. That's how you get in. And so we're saying, look at you. It's in you, okay? So they say, no, no, you have the key. You have the key. Somewhere we have the key. Okay? So do you. So do you. Go find it. Go find it. Go find it is what we're telling them. Okay. So... Now, we have entered the gates. We, we've already known that. We're standing and guarding the door, okay? It's not us, though. It is the new light. It's the new garment. It's the new body. It's the new temple, which radiates like the sun. Doesn't Revelation 22 talk about how there is no sun? Because like the lamb is the light of it. In New Jerusalem, you guys, something like that. Yahas. And it's too bright for some people, right? Remember? And it burns them. So, of course, they can't get through. This is why Genesis 3.26 says that the gate to Eden is blocked by a cherubim holding a flaming sword fire coming out of his mouth. It's truth that guards the gate. It's truth that guards the gate. And if you've got it, you've got it. It, it just, it's truly, truly a frequency of light that you must reach in order to enter the gate. Okay? Okay. It's not that we actually bar it. So Mars coming back around to Gemini, the twins, the two palm trees waving. Everybody wants to enter Salem, okay? Triumphant entry into Salem. We, we, we're not barring you. And we're not accusing you. We are pointing you in the right direction. It's in you. Okay? Okay. So, then we've got the lunar eclipse going on in Taurus. And I'm still trying to grasp this. But right away, let's talk about... The um, tree of life is the palm tree. So this would represent the Garden of Eden. The cherubim standing here, the two guard posts right here, guarding the way to the tree of life. But palm tree, the city of palm trees, you guys, you can look it up in scripture, please do. There's a couple definitions, but you'll find it. It means 
Jericho. And what does Jericho mean? Jericho means the moon. The moon. Okay, which is why this is up here. Okay, it, this is an eclipse, by the way. <laughs> okay, so Jericho is being surrounded. The lunar eclipse, the city of the moon, Jericho, is being surrounded. And everybody wants the gates to come down, okay? Back in April and May of this year, we had a solar eclipse going on in Taurus and a lunar eclipse going on in Scorpio. So the opposite of what we have going on right now. The moon children. Okay. The moon children. They're... they're <laughs> Playing at the gates, you guys. The moon children. Who is the moon children, you guys? Lucifer, his name, Halel, literally means to howl at the moon. And what do they say? Oh, I should have had it in scripture for you because you wouldn't believe it. They say L L L L. It's in the concordance E L L E L L E L L. <laughs> Okay, so the moon children, they howl at the moon um, and they say LL when they're howling at the moon. Okay, moon children, what am I talking about? I am talking about the children, the kids, who have been walking in death. It's in the nighttime. That's how different your next existence is going to look. Okay, right now you are walking in darkness. And so the light in the sky is actually just the moon. Once you cross over the gate, you truly see in vivid bright colors that you were in darkness before. Even the sun was eclipsed. Okay? Because the sun was eclipsed. S-O-N was lower than Satan because Satan was ruling this world. Now Jesus, the sun, is coming to rule the world. Okay, do you understand? So previously, Jesus, the sun, was eclipsed. It was Darkness, you guys, a day of darkness and gloominess and thick clouds is what we have been living in. I don't care how sunny, beautiful Florida is. We have been living in the day of judgment, the day of death. We took the forbidden fruit. God said, you shall surely die. It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. We have all been in our day of judgment. And no matter how much we think we know and how wise we think we are and how enlightened we think we are, it is still a day of darkness yet, even now, even now. Okay. The Spirit is speaking to me about these being two electric poles. Electrically charged, of course, of course. Magnets, electrically charged poles here. Okay? It's like we're about to cross over this threshold. When there are some people, you guys, the Israelites think they're coming to conquer the moon children, not realizing they are the moon children. Do you understand? Even their calendar is lunar based. And, and I'm sorry, you, you know that I'm not picking on a country or a people or anything. It's symbology in the language. Okay. And their God is Yah, the, the one of the law. Okay. They think they're coming to surround the moon city, Jericho, 
not realizing it's the city of palms. <laughs> it's the city of palms, the, the tree of life in the middle of the garden. Okay? They've got everything kind of backwards. Obviously, that's what this whole time is about, transposing, reversing, rewinding, all kinds of things. Okay. Which is why all the old teachings are coming back, by the way. We're reviewing. That's what retrograde means, review. And like there are so many planets in, in retrograde, okay? Okay, now there are some moon children who came in unaware, spying out Joshua and the spies, spying out Rahab. Rahab, the enlarged mansion of the moon. What does mansion mean, you guys? It means moon, Jericho. They found a suitable mother for their seed, the one who would birth the next generation, Adam. And she has hid them in the flax on her rooftop. Isn't that interesting? The garment the flax, the linen, you guys, it's linen. On the rooftop, it's on the surface, on the top, in the outer garment. She lets them down by the red thread. She lets them escape by the red thread. It's the, the human blood line. Okay? The one that's going to become the mansion. The one that's going to become the true light. The sun. Okay, see how much this is not only evolution of last man, Adam, first man, Adam to last man, Adam, but it's the evolution of the light. It's the evolution from the moon to the sun. It's the evolution of the concubine, the whore. What's her name? Rahab, who also Rahab means sea serpent. It's the transformation of the serpent into the beautiful dragon from the little dwelling tent tabernacle shack to the beautiful mansion you guys this is the redemption of all things coming okay it's like cross the threshold and a, a new world begins obviously we've been told this it's genesis 1:1 okay okay Okay, so at the blowing of the trumpet, the lunar, the, the moon will be eclipsed. That dark light, you guys, no, the dimmed light, right? The, not the true light and whatever. That's being eclipsed now. The false light is being eclipsed. Okay. What happens to the people that are still following the moon? The, the false light, the fluorescent light, the light of Lucifer, the light bearer. Hopefully, you have transformed, renewed your mind to be transformed, transfigured, started treating this body, this temple differently than the world does, in order that you could be transfigured into the new temple. Taking the iron rod, the metals inside of your body, M-E-T-A-L-S. I couldn't think of how to spell it for a minute. The metals in your body, potassium, iron, all the elements in your body, transforming those minerals, those metals into something, uh, it's instruments, instruments, tools, 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 tools in the tabernacle, beautiful candlesticks and beautiful whatever they used, the tools of the church service, the picks, a picks, a watch, Oh, oh, oh. P 
picks. <clears throat> Looks like this. It's something used in the church to hold the Eucharist, the body, the body of Christ. Um, incense that they swing, at least at the Catholic services. Um, charms and amulets. What What does the Pope wear? Does he have like, you know, all that? Does he have like gemstones up here and whatever? That's That's what you're supposed to be transforming everything into, okay? Okay, so this is the transformation. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's nothing like the doctrine of Christianity. Transfigured by changing your habits, your deeds, and your actions. Uh, there's something else here. Alchemy. Alchemist. Charms and amulets from iron and base metals into gold and silver. Okay, that's, that's what you were in death to learn, the dark arts. You guys know of in um, Enoch chapter 6 that all the fallen angels bring all kinds of wisdom to ape man Adam. Adam, in order to become wise, he had to learn those arts, and he did. Look at the world. But they took it and they put... Um, the dark spin on it, the lusty spin on it, the knowledge of man in it, okay? We have transformed those teachings back to their roots, the base, the natural. The Spirit is saying that which collects the sunlight I'm seeing the herbs that they were supposed to teach, you know, the magic potions, the herbs, the ointments, and the um, oils. Guys, frankincense and myrrh and gold. Okay, it, we took those, man took those and turned it into pharmaceuticals. Okay, that always carry a side effect and a poison with it. It, we are learning how to transform them back to their original state because man defiled the metals. He used them for war. Okay. The herbs, he used it for a Western medicine. Okay. Which is not the way of nature, of God. That's not the way. Man, get your filthy hands off my beautiful hospital. I already created the cure for everything for you. Just use it naturally. Learn. Learn it naturally. Everything. Okay? Everything. That's what I'm seeing in that, you guys. Okay. So, that's part of the lunar eclipse. There is such a disparity between the moon children. And the moon children is... You guys, it's a microcosm and a macro. The, every human being has been in an unevolved state. But then there's the, the ones that took the oath, you guys, to go really, really deep into death. Okay? So it, it happens on a, this scale and it happens on another scale also. The moon children are so disparate in their beliefs, in their practices, in their deeds, in their thoughts, in their hearts, in their metals, that the discordance of the words, because every human being is a word, a vibration, a frequency, a sound wave of God. God spoke. Okay? And there's such a disparity now, discordance. It's such an ugly 
noise, racket, din, it, it, that the discordancy in the frequencies is tearing down the walls of Jericho. Watch out. It, are you coming to conquer it? Because it's you. The, that enemy is you. You don't know what you're doing. You're, you're fighting against yourself. Or did you already sneak in, spy out the land, find a fruitful womb to bear fruit with? Okay? Then you're safe when the walls come down, when the gates open. Okay? Once again, showing that some are already inside the gates. Okay. Um, there's something here about the... You know, the ones on the bridge have a beautiful harmony. They're in one accord. And the Bible describes it on the day of Pentecost as a beautiful symphony, a beautiful harmony, a beautiful sound coming from those on the bridge. But then you have the dogs who are howling a different language. One is Babel. They never made sense out of the Bible. Thank you for bringing this through. The other is the Beeble. Beautiful sound in the Taurus. Beeble, the Taurus, the constellation in the sky, whose bright eye means bee and whose heart is the heart of the bull, the bull's eye. The bull's eye, the bull's eye, working in one accord, working in one accord. You set your eye on light, and now your heart, the seven stars, the seven candlesticks, the seven churches, hopefully, and turned it into a beautiful symphony here. Your heart, the heart of the bull, the eye of the bull, the bee bull. You turn those words on black and white pages into life. You turn them into life from death unto life, from the letter that kills to the spirit that gives life. Okay, that, thank you, Spirit, because the lunar eclipse is in Taurus. So it's the one standing on the bridge who are going to eclipse all the lunar children, the ones who still sleep, the ones who still are in darkness, their day of judgment, their day of death, their day of gloominess, their day of the unevolved mind, the unrenewed thinking, the untransfigured form. Okay? Those are being eclipsed and the beebles are rising up. Babel's being eclipsed and the beebles coming. The Tower of Babel, the Temple of Salem. Okay, there's something here, and we'll get it eventually. We'll get it. This guy is literally in, in the definition of the tarot deck. He is hanging on the tree of knowledge, literally, for so long that he finally figured it out. He became enlightened. He is literally an enlightened person. The Spirit is saying he danced round and round and round and round long enough to make light of it, to let it bear fruit, the olive branch. It finally bared fruit, bore fruit, how, however you say it. Okay, guys, who stood at the gates? What, what's the legend? Peter stands at the pearly gates uh, it, deciding who's going to gain their entrance. Peter was crucified upside down. So the legend goes. Okay? It's him who sat there 
You guys, this is the hanged man. He waited long enough to beat Father Time. Okay. Um, Peter. Peter hanging upside down. The cross upside down. Jupiter. The symbol for Jupiter. Peter hung there long enough to become enlightened. You see, all the blood rushes to your head and you start thinking differently. Renewed mind. <laughs> the Spirit is showing me that all of his dancing changed his um, figure. Changed his figure. Okay? Okay. He hung there long enough, waited forever. This is a pendulum. Pending, 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 pending in the courtroom. Pending in the courtroom. To beat. Father. Time. Saturn. Satan. Kronos. The one who usually eats his own children. Peter hung there long enough to beat Father Time. Waiting, 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 waiting. All of the ancestors, all of the saints who went before us, how long have they been waiting? Waiting to beat Father Time. We're about to beat him, you guys. Okay? Entered in spiritually. Already, all of us entered in spiritually. That was the blessing of the lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. That we got to do it spiritually. And wait then for it to come in the physical. And we waited and we waited, and we waited. We hung there, pending in the courtroom, in abeyance, for so long and so many generations. Now the gate to the Garden of Eden opens. And it, 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 we're being shown this in the sky through the lunar eclipse in Taurus. So Taurus Field. Taurus Field. Oh, oh, oh. Upside down. Okay. Taurus, Taurus. You guys, it's a, you know, pull, pull switch that the energy finally starts flowing the right way. The energy finally starts flowing the right way. And I'm seeing them circle Jericho seven times. It finally starts flowing the right way. 
the whirlpool. You guys, I'm seeing the whirlpool, the whirlwind, the whirlpool finally starts spinning the right way. That is so interesting, right? Because if the pole is switching, you know, the poles of the moon, the nodes of the moon, um, the North Pole is in Taurus. The South Pole is in Scorpio. Um, the North Node is our destiny and our fate. The South Node is what we want to leave behind. The nodes of the moon. They have names. K2 and, and something. In Vedic astrology, they have names. The Ram, where Jupiter crosses over December 21st, remember? This is the South Node. South Node. And that's where the solar eclipse happened in, in um, Scorpio. It was very close to the South Node. Remember, when you are a turtle laying like this, you can be striped, you can be imprinted, you can be stamped with everybody else's tool, weapon. They tell you who you should be, okay? The North Node is your destiny, your fate, your lot. And the shield, the tortoise shell, which is the shield of the sun, becomes your protection. The sun becomes your protection. Instead of always being subject to the whippings of Kronos, Satan, Saturn, Father Time. So in other words, the corruptible flesh becomes the incorruptible. Incorruptible is what we're talking about. All the wounds, all the markings, all the marks, all the whippings, all the bruising, all the beating is representing what happens to the human perishable skin, the corruptible skin. It grows old and dies. The new skin does not. It's incorruptible. Okay, so... Apparently, this is all being told in the stars too, and I'm not an expert there, you guys, but we have, we have the ideas of what's going on. Um, I think that's it. I'll see you in the next video.